Rob Norris is a returning Spark speaker. He has spent his career in corporate communication with Duke Energy, Cummins, and now his own consultancy, along with his two partners. But his first love is history. When he was 48, he went back to school to get his master's degree in history. Now, that's not exactly a career move, but it did help later when he was offered a job as an instructor at Butler University, where he teaches there today in the College of Communication. He keeps bringing history into all of his lessons, though. He says he can't help himself, so let's give Rob a warm Sparks welcome as he comes to the stage. 228 years and one month ago exactly, they stormed the Bastille. French Revolution started 14th of July. They stormed the Bastille. You remember about the Bastille? You ever wonder about the Bastille? Let me show you something. That's the Bastille. Now, it's a fortress that they, they built during the late Middle Ages to keep the English out during the Hundred Years' War. Didn't do a very good job of it. The English were taken over by 1420 when it looked something like this. But they threw the English out, and the Bastille kept figuring into conflicts over the years, and they kind of turned it into a royal treasury, and that was fine. Then along about the 17th century, Cardinal Richelieu said, you know, that would make a good prison. Why don't we start sending prisoners there? And the king, if you made him mad or, or something, he could send you there. All he needed was this. The infamous letter de cachet, the letter with the royal seal, that's all it took. He wrote that letter, you went to the Bastille and you stayed there as long as he wanted you to. That was it. Now people made up a lot of stories about what went on in the Bastille. Suppose you, they, they, they forgot about you. Suppose you just stayed there the rest of your life. What went on behind those walls? They didn't much like that. And all this dissatisfaction came to the head about 1789. Okay? It was a bad year. All right? Taxes are heavy. Nobles don't have to pay taxes because they're nobles. Only commoners have to pay them. And there'd been a bad harvest. All right? People subsisted on bread. You know how much of your income had to go to bread that year? 88%. No wonder they were unhappy. So on the morning of July 14th, 1789, they gathered. They went over to the Bastille because they wanted powder for weapons. They figured, we've got to arm ourselves. And they talked to the governor who said, oh, I'll negotiate, but the negotiations weren't going anywhere. So about uh, 3 o'clock, some guys climbed up on a roof, lowered the drawbridge, and 300 people rushed in and started firing, and he fired back. And so became the siege of the Bastille. It only lasted two hours, all right? Because the governor said, I give up, I surrender, and he surrendered and one of his officers surrendered to, and a uh, mob grabbed him up and killed him and cut their heads off and put them on pikes. <laughs> All right? But then they rescued the prisoners, and here's how it was represented. Oh, look at that. Look at that poor old guy. In the newspaper, a couple of days later, they said cells were thrown open. Cells were thrown open, and innocent people and venerable old men were amazed to behold the light of day. All right, and then they began tearing it down quite naturally, but not before they brought up from the dregs torture devices, things obviously designed to hold men in place, all right, and tear them apart. That's what that was about. But then, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know that when they stormed the Bastille, there were only seven prisoners inside it? Yeah, four of them were forgers who had been duly convicted in courts of law. Two of them were lunatics. Uh, that guy was one of them. He thought he was Julius Caesar. Yeah, they had to put him back in an asylum. And the only other prisoner was an aristocrat, a delinquent who'd been sent there by his own family. That was it. That was it. Uh, one of the prisoners said, look, I'm glad to be free, but can I finish my pheasant dinner first? This is true. And the torture devices turned out to be pieces of medieval armor and a broken printing press. That's what it turned out to be. The Bastille was never what they thought it was. Now, I'm going to ask you, do you have a Bastille in your mind? Is there something out there that symbolizes great evil that you'd, men, you'd put men's head on a pike to get rid of it? If so, maybe you look like her. And maybe you shouldn't look like her. <laughs> Given the politics that we have today, it may be worthwhile if you have a Bastille to ask a couple of questions about it before you approach it and start cutting someone's head off.